Hey, this is Kyle from EssentialDeveloper.com. Today we are going to analyze the Clean Swift architecture and, as we did in previous videos, with Viper, MVC, MVVM and MVP, we will decide if we can call it an architecture or a design pattern. So let's go! The Clean Swift architecture, or as also called VIP, was introduced to the world by CleanSwift.com. And, just like Viper and other patterns, the main goals for the architecture were the stability and to fix the massive view controller problem. The name VIP can be confused with Viper, and interestingly enough, the creators of Viper almost called it VIP, but decided to drop the name because it could stand for very important architecture or something like that. So, the clean architecture or VIP is very similar to Viper, as both originated from Uncle Bob's clean architecture ideas. So, can we consider VIP a software architecture or just a design pattern? The VIP diagram describes its main structure the view controller, interactor, and presenter, or as they call it, the VAP cycle. So, the VAP cycle differs from the Viper relationship model described in our previous video. In Viper, the communication between interactor and presenter and view and presenter is bidirectional. Instead, VAP follows a unidirectional approach, where the view controller talks to the interactor exclusively. The interactor runs business logic with its collaborators and passes the output to the presenter. The presenter formats the interactor output and gives the response back to the view controller, so it can render its views, which means the presenter never talks directly with the interactor and the view controller never talks directly with the presenter. So does this unidirectional communication model define an architecture? Also, are those three components, the view controller, interactor and presenter, enough to describe the application architecture? It may seem like an architecture, but it's such a limited outlook of the application that we consider it a design pattern. And this design pattern has a name already, MVP. So regardless of what we call it, the MVP design pattern is not a software architecture, as we explained it in a previous video. However, VAP, or Clean Swift, has more components than just a view controller, interactor, and presenter. For example, data models, routers, and workers. So like Viper, the Clean Swift author describes that VAP can have less or even more layers of separation as needed, but the core must follow MVP, or the VAP cycle. So the VAP cycle sounds more like an organizational design pattern that can solve the massive view controller problem and make your code more testable, but it doesn't describe the big picture or the software architecture. VAP, just like Viper and other patterns, is trying to solve class dependency issues like the massive view controller and testability, rather than module dependency issues like modularity. So if the described clean Swift components or VAP components, we may end up with testable code, but spaghetti architecture. VAP or Clean Swift also encourages the use of templates to facilitate its implementation. It can be very convenient to have templates, but at the same time, it may create a limited framework to think. We don't believe there is a design pattern or template that can solve all the problems and can be infinitely extended. We believe that instead of trying to fit every problem into a template, every software architecture must be carefully crafted to solve the system challenges. For example, some systems would benefit more from an event-driven producer-consumer streaming model, where other systems would not. So let's have a look at the Clean Swift sample project. You can find a link to the sample project in the video description. So I've created a diagram to show the high-level class and module dependencies. As you can see, there are arrows everywhere, crossing module boundaries. So changes to the software can break multiple modules and, of course, multiple tests. In the Clean Swift sample app, the application is separated in scenes. So we have a list order scene, a create order scene, and a show order scene. So let's zoom in and have a look. So as all iOS applications, it starts at the app delegate, and the first view to show up on the screen is the list orders view controller. The view hierarchy is set up on storyboards, but as soon as the view controller is instantiated, the view controller has the responsibility of creating its collaborators and configuring them. For example, the view controller will create the router, 
and configure it. The view controller is also going to create the presenter and configure it. It's going to create the interactor and configure it. So the view controller is the entry point for each scene and is also responsible for the object graph creation. Plus it's controlling the views. And right here we can see the VIP cycle with those big orange arrows. For example, the view controller will send a message to the interactor through the business logic interface that the interactor implements. The interactor will generate a response somehow and pass it to the presentation logic interface that the presenter implements and the presenter will generate some view models and pass it to the view. Thus, we have a unidirectional flow of control here. And I've separated this diagram into files to be easier to understand all those errors. For example, the presentation logic protocol lives in the same file as the presenter class, which means the interactor has a source code dependency to the presenter, so they cannot go into separate modules. And the same happens with the presenter depending on a protocol defined in the view controller file, which creates a source code dependency that also is going to make this not modular. And all of the components depend on modules defined into an enum namespace called list orders, and they live in the same file. So all of the types defined within a scene are strongly coupled together. And we can fix this by moving some things around and breaking these dependencies. But this doesn't look like a concern this architecture is trying to solve. It actually encourages you to create those scenes with those strong dependencies. So we have business logic, presentation, and the delivery mechanism, for example, the UI, all bundled into one big module or a scene. And the scene depends on UIKit, so everything depends on UIKit. Because those components cannot go separate ways easily. It can be fixed, but as set up in the sample project, you cannot. So when objects create its own dependencies, it gets harder and harder to decouple them. For example, the interactor collaborates with workers and it also creates and owns the workers. And the workers have other dependencies. For example, the orders worker depends on any type that conforms to the order store protocol. So the interactor also needs to create this dependency. For example, it can be an orders in-memory store or it can be a core data store, which will couple the interactor or the application business logic tightly to frameworks and services. So in this order file, we have the workers and all the store logic, which is defined in the article as somehow business logic, but it looks more like, at least in the sample project, an adapter layer. So the interactors don't need to talk directly to the database, but the interactors have to create those types, which makes them coupled and breaks the abstraction. And since the orders worker don't depend in a specific use case, they can be reused across use cases. For example, we have the create order scene, where the create order interactor also creates and owns its own orders worker, and also creates the worker dependencies, like a core data store or an in-memory store. And in this scene, you can also see the VIP cycle, interactor sending messages to the presenter, the presenter sending messages to the view controller, and the view controller sending messages to the interactor. And again, the view controller creates the object graph and configures all the dependencies for the scene. And there's also a namespace for the data models used within the scene. And everything is coupled through the source code dependencies and framework dependencies and model dependencies and as you can see, there is a green arrow here that if we follow it, we can see that scenes depend on other scenes as well. Just like we have a blue arrow showing that the create order scene also depends on the list order scene, which couples all the modules and makes things rigid and can make things hard to change. So in a big picture, looking at the software architecture, everything is coupled in a way that can make collaboration hard, it can be fixed, but as defined in the sample project, it is highly coupled. You can also see this red arrow, there is another module that depends on the create order scene. And the only module that is independent of everything is the data models module. For example, the order struct, the payment method struct, the shipping method struct, and the address struct. 
they all live in its own file with no external dependencies and can be seen as like the core of the application. And then every other module depends on those data models. You can see usage of the data models in the presenter, in the router, in the interactor, in the workers, and you can see all the errors coming in here. There's even more errors. It was just too much to reason, so I had to delete some of them. All of the modules depends on the data models. And this can be a big problem. Because, for example, if we need to add a different payment method here, we may break all the modules. So if you're collaborating in a project, this hype coupling can become a problem. So let's forget about classes now, and let's have a look at super high-level diagram of the dependencies. So in this high-level modules dependency diagram, we can see how everything is coupled. For example, the list orders depend on the show order module and in the create orders, plus the data models, the workers, and the services. And the same goes for the create order and the show order. And the workers depend on the data models, and the services depend on the workers and the data models. So for example, a change in the data model can break all other modules. And definitely will force you to recompile when we deploy all the other modules. Another example, changes to the workers can break every module apart from the data models, and so on. And this is not how Uncle Bob's clean architecture looks like. In Uncle Bob's clean architecture, there is the care for class dependencies and module dependencies. So things are not just clean or testable, but they are also modular, which facilitates changes and collaboration. So let's have a look at those dependencies in a circular diagram. So as we can see, we have at the core the module that doesn't depend on any other module, the data models. Then we have the workers that depend on those data models directly, but don't depend on anything else. Then we have the services like databases, cloud services, like APIs. And outside of these core layers, we have the features or the scenes. For example, the list orders scene where the VAP cycle lives and the router and models. And it depends on UIKit. And the same happens for the create order and show order scenes. And the way the list orders module depends on these core layers is not as the clean architecture advises you to do, because the list orders module depends on all those three layers. For example, the list orders module depends on the services, on the databases, on the cloud systems, on core data and APIs. The same for create order, it depends on all the rings, which means changes to any of those rings may break all of the features, which can be a problem. And this is very different than how Uncle Bob recommends you to organize your architecture. For example, here we have the clean architecture, and as we can see, we have the entities in the middle, and those can be data models, or it can be some shared modules, the use cases, and then we have controllers, gateways, presenters, and outside layer, we have frameworks and drivers. The problem is that we have frameworks and drivers in the core layer, which can be a problem, or not. It doesn't mean that Uncle Bob is right, but this is definitely high-coupled and monolithic. So the VAP simple app architecture is not VAP. VAP is a design pattern that is also called MVP. The real simple app architecture is what we've seen here in this diagram, and it's highly coupled and a monolithic architecture. If we want to create a somewhat testable monolith, it might work well. However, we might quickly find out that the lack of modularity prevents us from scaling the team, moving fast, and prevents us from achieving key business metrics. For example, deployment frequency, estimation accuracy, lead time for changes, mean time to recover, and etc. As explained in the previous video, we believe that software architecture is less about your types, classes, and even responsibilities, and more about how the components communicate to each other, how they depend on each other, and what is the shared understanding of the senior developers regarding what are the important parts, what is coupled, what is decoupled, what is hard to change, what is easy to change, and why. How is the data flowing between layers, and why. Is the data going in one direction, two directions, multiple directions? Can we support the business short and long term goals? So we would like to reinforce that our code bases are like living organisms, and they are changing all the time. So does the architecture. It is constantly evolving, and there are no templates for that. 
At Essential Developer, we do believe software architecture has a strong correlation with product success, product longevity, and product sustainability. So we advise professional developers to learn from Uncle Bob's Clean Architecture, VIP, Viper, MVC, MVVM, MVP, and other patterns, but not try to copy and paste solutions. Remember, every challenge is different and there are no silver bullets. So VIP, Viper, MVC, MVVM, MVP, as design patterns can guide you towards more structured components. However, they don't define the big picture, software architecture. So use them with care. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something today. Don't forget to subscribe and I see you next time. Mm -hmm.